Hey everybody, what's going on? My name is Mr. Optimistic. For those who don't know me or just tuning in, I've been doing Olympic weightlifting for 10 years and I'm just documenting my journey. Uh, so when I do compete on the national stage, I have all this to look back on and be like, damn, I did it. And this is how I did it. So while you see me lifting in the background, uh, struggling with 110 right there from the blocks, um, today's topic will be about speed. Speed all the way up. There you go. Not bad. And what is the fastest way to any destination? It's straight. And for us, it's straight up and straight down. And then just stand up. It's literally as simple as that. But there's a lot of different intricacies on how to get there and how to maintain that pool and body movement and body awareness throughout everything that I'll uh, try to break down in this video here. Well, we'll start with that. So when you deviate from a straight line there's just a massive loss of energy there so anything that we do whether it's pulls uh, from the blocks from the floors from above the knees all the different crazy lovely variations that sometimes get thrown into programming you really just want to keep that bar glued to your body <laughs> glued to your body because if it gets away then you got to chase it um hence my, with the power snatches right if you bump that bar a little bit too far out, you may have to take a step forward. So you really just, it's pretty simple, right? Up, down, stand. That's it. That's really it. But basically you wanna make sure that as you're pulling, you're keeping that chest up. Because if you are uh, doing anything but keeping your chest up, you will see that bar slowly get away from your body. And then you have to uh, do the whole you have to compensate for that right and then you have to pull your shoulders back so to avoid all that you need to keep everything as tight as possible contract your abs keep your lats back and down keep those arms nice and long and then just keep gripping on that hook grip so you know with all that being said you just really want to nail in the fact that you got to keep that bar close in order to generate that force up and that speed under the bar so some of the cues that I was given that really helped me was think of yourself when you uh, going down a slide, right? Ever been down a water slide or maybe when you're 10 years old or something like that, you grab that bar and you try to pull yourself through, right? That bar doesn't move, but that speed of which you pull yourself through is how you get under the bar. So you want to make sure that you're keeping those arms nice and long because any bending in the arm uh, is going to get that bar away from you. So one of the main issues that a lot of people do that I've seen do is jumping forward. So that basically means that you're using your shoulders to finish the lift because if you're standing straight up, if you can visualize that right now, and you throw your shoulders back, where's that bar going to go? You know, pretending you're holding the bar in your hand, your shoulders are going back and that bar is going away from you, right? So in order to get that bar closer to you, you have to pull your body to the bar instead of the other way around. And that other way around, so happens to be the correct way, right? Is if you're standing vertical with the bar at your hip, the only thing you have to do is actively pull yourself under the bar and that bar should land right behind your clavicle. And at that point, that bar is directly in your midline and the only thing you need to do is stand up. You know, with the momentum and the weight of the bar basically landing as you're finishing that pull under, which would basically look like a bottom of a front squat, then as long as you're stable and everything is in the correct positioning, you will just stand up. Uh, you will basically barely know or barely know that you're standing up halfway through you're standing up because of that bouncing effect that the bar has with that weight that's bringing you up so with all that being said pull yourself under <laughs> and do not let that bar get away from you some other people uh, do have an issue which is jumping backwards so that is um very interesting to see because there's a lot of things that have to happen in order for that person to do that successfully <laughs> um a lot of that being that they finish the extension with their shoulders behind their hips and that leads them with a backwards momentum and for them to basically catch up with the bar 
and when they stand a lot of them actually take a step forward because that backward pressure is pushing them back so they have to fight it forward so it becomes just a whole topsy-turvy type of thing and it's it's i don't like watching people lift that way because it just it's just not visually appealing <laughs> it's just not visually appealing so long story short i won't get too much into that because that just hurts my brain as you can hear uh so brings me back to efficiency while lifting right you basically if you're going to compete which i highly recommend you do you only have six big lifts to do right first lifts should be easy within 90 percent, right and the way that you get all of those lifts in and don't mentally and physically bomb out is keeping your lifts as efficient as possible so you that means eliminating the forward jumping the backwards jumping and deviating from that straight line um, you, have, you may have heard of the S curve right so that is the bar slowly going back towards the hip and then as you get extension the bar will slightly get away from you making uh, and drawing the S as that bar comes back down and you know finishing that S curve down into a vertical line and then when you stand up you should repaint that vertical line and it shouldn't create another curve or deviate from that straight line as um, close as possible, right? So if you are efficient, you will hit all six lifts and you should be able to uh, PR during that comp. So, I mean, that's very important and that's why uh, a lot of coaches, uh, mine included, do a lot of variations of pools, do a lot of different complexes like this, you know, must no contact muscle snatch, and uh, <laughs> overhead squat, these these are something to work on. These are very difficult for me because I very much so want to get my hips to the bar. Um, but you know, as as you'll see, you know, through me progressing, it's it'll slowly get better at it. Um, but this uh, no no hook <laughs> no hook no contact muscle snatch. Um, really emphasizes you getting your elbows through to the bar and that's something that I do appreciate and it really feels like after uh, except that snatch right there um, after I do the powers or after I go into the power snatches that it feels a lot lighter and the turnover is much more efficient much more confident on that turnover I should say so some of the tips that kind of help me to you know think of staying quick um, and trying to be quick is the fact that to keep my arms nice and long and a lot of people don't utilize the hook grip I do not know why uh, but that's something that I believe does increase your speed if you can execute it correctly um, because it really eliminates any arm bend that you uh, may develop by not using the hook grip so it oh can't believe I missed that one <laughs> um, it basically eliminates that uh, mental process of you like oh I really gotta pull with my arms to finish but it's actually in reality your hook grip uh, creating that strap like tension so you can whip yourself under the bar and not lose any of that momentum and speed if you do uh, do arm bends because um, if you see any well that one a little bit um, but any lifts that I do miss mainly it is because of me pulling too soon and then my pull gets all out of whack and things just miss. I typically miss in front of me, I would say 99% of the time. I don't think I've missed behind me in probably a year or so. <laughs> it's been a little bit, but I digress. So keep the arms long. Um, that's one way to stay quick. Uh, think of, well, miss that one. Um, once you get extension, that's when you want to think that your arms uh, in the hook grip create that strap-like effect, right? And or your uh, wrists are kind of like hooks, hooking onto that bar. And you want to think of actively pulling yourself under and rotating those wrists through as well as keeping those elbows high. So you keep that bar nice and close to you. So as we get close to ending the video, I just want to eliminate the misconception of dropping under the bar because that at least means to me that you completely stop the leg drive 
and you're just doing the coin flip at that point you know because there's no way for you to actively get under the bar if there's no power generating that bar up your body right because the only way to recreate that speed and whip is by actively pushing down and using your arms as the bar gets to your hip to actively pull under you know because as you see right here if i'm if i just stop pushing with my legs that bar is just going to crash onto my knees so you want to just think next time you're lifting actively push your body under the bar with the power generated from your legs so with that being said guys thanks for sticking around like the video if you like it leave a comment with any questions i'll love to answer them in the next video and last but not least don't forget to subscribe so let me know guys down below what is one cue that helped you get under that bar quicker let me know maybe you can help me out maybe i can help you out but either way let me know down below until then i'll see you next time guys bye